Today, we're going to look at another Orca Slicer tutorial, this time talking about embossing text on the side of your models. So this is a tool I've used a handful of times, and it's pretty convenient compared to a lot of the other offerings out there, especially the CAD-based ones. Typically, when you want to put some text on a model, you've got to import it into a CAD software, pick out your texts from maybe limited fonts or even the font that's available, and then find a way to embed it in the model using a negative shape modifier in the case of Tinkercad, or creating a body that cuts into your model in the case of Onshape. That can work just fine, but it's not always going to suit every model. And especially if you have the case of a curved model, like we typically would, and a flat plane of text, it becomes a little bit trickier to get those two bodies to talk well to each other. But there's also considerations like different fonts, text justification, character spacing and line spacing, boldness, things like that, that you'd like to have control over as well. These are problems that are easily solved in Orca Slicer using the basic text function, and a couple of different tools that they have available. So let's take a look at it. Of course, it's not perfect and it's not gonna be a one size fits all situation, but it's a refreshing change of pace from the CAD offerings that we've had up until this point. First of all, we're gonna open our slicer, import our model. We're gonna select the model and that's gonna allow all of our tools in the top row here to populate so we can select something. From there, we're gonna use the text tool and that's gonna bring up some generic texts and put it somewhere on the model. We can then drag that around to whatever piece of the model we'd like and start manipulating it to suit our desired effect. This is where we encounter a huge problem solver straight off the bat. Right out of the box, Orca Slicer has a large variety of fonts. They're kind of the standard fonts that you'd be used to seeing as well. So if you've got a model that requires a certain font, likely you're going to be able to find it in these default offerings. So beyond the font, the thing that I like to set first is the size. The rest of the model decisions get made based on the size of the font that I'm using. You can adjust these values by using the plus or minus here or just typing in the number that you want. Similarly, you have the same control over the text depth. So this will determine how far into the model that you cut if you do a cut operation or how far out of the model it's going to protrude if you do a join operation. The next big problem we're going to solve is using this checkbox here, the use surface checkbox. This actually solves the problem of having your text and model having that planar disparity. So when you have flat text and curved model, it kind of fixes that for you with the click of one checkbox. It drops the text down onto the model based on the geometry that's available for it. And it'll just automatically match the profile of the model based on the location that you have the text on. Now the interesting thing here is this actually kind of leads to another problem. So the text is now referencing the model's surface, and it does it fine, but on the edges it kind of distorts the text depending on how long or how many characters you have in that phrase. Now to help mitigate this text wrapping and warping funny at the edges, Orca's already got a solution. It's the next feature down. The per glyph checkbox is the one that fixes this. By selecting this box, it kind of fixes the uneven wrapping at the edges by making the letters reference the model in a way that's uniform for all the characters. After that, you can mess with things like your left, right, and center justification, the spacing of the lettering, as well as spacing in between lines if you've got multiple lines of text. And of course, you need to have the simple ability to bold or italicize your text. These functions now have a more granular level of adjustability though. You can choose how bold or how italicized you'd like these texts to be. And then you've got the from surface and rotation options. The from surface one lets you determine how far away the text sits from the surface. And the rotation one, I mean, do I need to explain what the rotation does to the text? You got it figured out. You don't need me. You don't need me to tell you, you got it. Very good. And then finally, we're left with a face text to camera button, which probably serves some purpose that really helps somebody out in a specific use case. I've never used it, but it's an option that's there. You turn the camera and then you click this and the text will orient towards you. So cool. Let me know in the comments if you've actually used that button before. Like if you have a thing that you make that commands use of this feature. Let me know. Better yet, check out our free Patreon where we'll have a discussion about this. Come hang out if you want to interact a little bit more directly. It's free.
Now looking down the list, we've got the style section, and this has a little drop down menu and a couple of other buttons. What this does is it allows you to save all of the settings that we've just adjusted inside of a preset. That way, if you've got something that you do repeatedly, and you want to have that level of boldness, that level of italicized characters with this spacing and that font, well, you don't have to click through every time. You just pull up your preset and it'll apply the changes to the model. So that's good. But really the star of the show here is the join and cut features. This last decision you can make about your text determines if the text is going to be embossed or inset into your model by using the cut feature, or if it's going to be joined to the model and protrude out using the join feature. There's also the shape modifier feature that allows you to use your text as a shape modifier if you want to have specific settings for your text, so specific infill for your text that's different than the model. All different thing, but that's available as well. I usually prefer to embed inside of my models instead of have it sticking out of my models, but there are some cases where I do that. I find that if you cut inside of the model one millimeter or so, you don't really have to worry about the overhangs and your quality doesn't suffer either. Although your quality only remains intact if you're using letters and numbers that are big enough. The character size that I used on these models that I'm printing for my buddy was not big enough. So some of them it's kind of legible and some of them it sort of looks not as good. So there you have it. Another quick Orca Slicer tutorial, a rundown of the text tool that's surprisingly powerful. Hopefully you were able to learn something today. Bye.